Welcome to Monday Night Live, ladies and gentlemen. Drop in the comments and let me know you're tuning in. Let me shut this door here. Um, so tonight I had a guest and they're going to be coming next week instead of tonight. So I had to think this afternoon about what sort of content to share with you. And one of the things that I found quite difficult when growing my brand is finding good practical content on how to grow a YouTube channel. I definitely learned by trial and error with when it comes to YouTube. And um, I wanted to share with you some of the things that I learned so you could apply them in your business because YouTube is something that I found extremely effective. It's the second largest search engine in the world. Um, hi, Amber from Cape Town. Thanks for tuning in. Who else have we got on? Uh, here we go, Oliver. Okay, uh, who's got the best moustache joke? Let, let me know in the comments. <laughs> it's it's halfway through Movember. Jeez, it looks a bit uneven, doesn't it, actually? Um, and so my moustache is looking a little bit creepy at the moment. Um, some friends have started calling me Nacho instead of Nat. But anyway, moving back to the content. Right, so YouTube, second largest search engine in the world. 300 hours of videos are uploaded every 60 seconds to the platform. So the question is, how do you optimize it effectively to capture attention and engage your target audience? Um, and so I've got nine keys to share with you, but perhaps before I do that, just so that um, you guys believe that I know what I'm talking about, I'm just sharing my screen with you here. Um, so in the last 365 days, my channel's got over half a million views. Um, my subscriber number is at 11,463. One of the things that I, I think I struggled with is I was getting like more and more views all the time on YouTube, but um, they weren't necessarily converting into subscribers. And so I wanna share with you how I worked that out. You've got a bit of an echo. Um, let me just fix that. I've just noticed in the comments, someone said that we've got a bit of an echo. I'm just gonna sort that out. Uh, let's have a look here. Speakers. Echo isolation, there we go. That should be a bit better. Oh, geez, we've got a few comments here. Dean Nicholas, thanks for the uh, compliment, mate. Hey, Robin, how are you tonight? Appreciating the growth, Amber. We've got a bit of pretty good turnout tonight, guys. Hey, Mohammed, thanks for tuning in. The Instagram posts have been classic. If you're not following me on Instagram, get on to Nat Bibby at, on Instagram for all the stuff that's not suitable for YouTube and LinkedIn. All right, so um, one of the things, while I've got this share screen up, I think I might share with you, um, Marshall's doing... Uh, 360s in the background. Um, my top videos here. So let's go to top videos. So we want to, how do we do this? If you want to go, so this is the last 48 hours. The one which has got the most has been this one here. I'm just gonna open it up and talk through with you why this video did particularly well. If you're not on YouTube, by the way, set up a channel. It's it's extremely valuable. The reason being is it's not just, like it's a social media site in terms of the fact that people can comment and so on, um, but um, it's a search engine as well. So people can find this stuff through Google, through searching on YouTube, second largest search engine in the world. Um, and this particular video has got 135,000 odd views. It's created 1,100 subscribers. Um, I had uh, the YouTube revenue turned on for a while, decided to turn it off just to make it more um, user friendly. Uh, the echo continues. Okay, just bear with me a second, guys, because I know we're live. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that the echo stops. All right, let me just bear with me for a second, guys. All 
Okay, just bear with me, guys. Speakers. All right, there we go. It should be better. Let me know if the echo continues in the comments, guys. Um, so this particular video I noticed did particularly well. And um, so I looked at like, you know, what was it about this video that was different to the others? It was getting like, I was getting 90% of my subscribers from this particular video. Um, and so there's a couple of things to notice about it. Let me just mute this. Let's mute, let's pause it. Okay, skip ads. All right, so the first thing was, is the keyword that I was using for this particular video. Um, LinkedIn marketing is something, oh, it's back since I tried to fix it. Some people saying it's okay now, sounds perfect. Okay, thanks for all the feedback, guys. Um, if there is an echo, I apologize. Um, all right, so LinkedIn marketing was a keyword that I was showing up for a lot and it was turning into subscribers. This particular video is quite interesting because it was actually a presentation that I did where the slides were not working. And so I think that played into it because I was speaking more directly to the audience rather than relying on the slides and therefore the YouTube video was probably more popular. The other thing to notice is that it is a longer form video. This was particular one was 26 minutes. And so what I try to do is create longer form content and make it around LinkedIn marketing. And so um, that way LinkedIn, uh, sorry, YouTube will suggest like videos in the sidebar that are related from my content. Um, and I started optimizing to those keywords and started to get a lot more views and a lot more conversions um, from the subscribers that I, that I had. And if we scroll down, there was a lot of comments, which is awesome. I was particularly nervous actually in this particular keynote, which I, I, you know, surprised me that it did well. So it's really important to look at the analytics. Um, you can put timestamps in, which help a lot. Like if people click on these timestamps here, um, it, it counts as some form of engagement with YouTube. So, you know, every time somebody clicks on that, it's almost like getting a like or a comment, which is pretty powerful. I learned this all, you know, by myself. There's very few YouTube content creators out there which tell you this stuff. They all talk about like knowing your audience and all that kind of stuff, which is really important. Um, but um, no, no one was sharing like the actual tactics, the practical stuff. Um, and so then putting related videos in here helped a lot. Um, and you got, you put tags in, but like don't overdo the tags, just make sure they're relevant. The interesting thing about YouTube is it can tell what you're saying in the video. So if you're talking about LinkedIn marketing, as an example, it's great to say, you know, this video is about LinkedIn marketing, repeat like LinkedIn marketing, LinkedIn lead generation very clearly. Um, if you want to get views for that particular keyword. And I've found that as I've learned some of these tactics, YouTube's been a much easier platform to navigate. All right. And now I'm just going to stop sharing the screen so I can share with you content. How are you doing, my man? Anthony, hello. Karen, we've got quite a few uh, people tuning in, which is great to see. Thanks, Luke, for the feedback. Appreciate it. Christiane. Here we go. The Troy Bookkeeping's a YouTube fan. Um, guys, by the way, get on YouTube, seriously. Um, like for the, f I've been on there for 10 years growing my subscribers and it literally took me nine years to create a thousand subscribers and then I went in one year to 10,000. So it definitely does make a huge difference once you understand the analytics. YouTube has over a billion users for starters. That's, that's a huge amount. 45% of people watch more than an hour of Facebook or YouTube videos a week. More than 500 million hours of video are watched on YouTube every single day. If you're still not convinced, listen to this, listen to this statistic. What if I told you that 74% of internet usage, 74% of internet usage is now people watching some kind of video. 
So you can imagine if you're marketing without using video in your marketing, you're definitely marketing with at least one hand behind your back. YouTube has become more popular than TV by a long shot. I went to, um, there's a show in Melbourne called The Project, and I went to see it, it's hit live, and it was so interesting. They had a YouTube um, expert on uh, The Project, and during the break, obviously I was in the audience, so I saw what happened during the ad break, um, the hosts were like, oh, how do you get on YouTube? Like trying to get all these statistics, like they take tips on how they could grow their career on YouTube because they realize that people are watching YouTube more than they're watching TV. Isn't that amazing? So it, it is, it, it could be a long process. I did 500 videos before I worked out what was happening, but hopefully I can help you skip some of that. So first of all, know your audience. So like people will subscribe to a channel with an expectation and they're getting a certain type of content. So if they watch one of the videos, that they're subscribing to the content because they want more of that kind of video. So the issue is like if, if you're doing like all different types of video and trying different content, which is fine to work out what your niche is, um, but you don't want to continue. Once you work out what's working, you want to you want to double down on that particular niche. Um, <coughs> settle down, Marshall. Marshall's doing a bit of barking. He, he had a groom today, so he's a little bit temperamental. So know your audience. Um, what I suggest doing is create a persona because knowing your audience can be quite a complicated thing if you haven't done it before. Is so create like an avatar, give them a name, um, and and start to work out like how many kids they have, where they live, and it could be doesn't necessarily like mean you. Marshall's hyperactive. Doesn't necessarily mean you only market to that pit person. It just means that your content's going to be much more direct if you know who you're talking about. <laughs> I'm just sorry. I'm just tuning into some of the comments. There's some funny comments going about my mo going on. Marshall, can you please stop running around? We've got an audience here, man. All right. So when you look at your customer journey, you want to look at like what kind of videos people are watching to make buying decisions. That's really what it comes down to, um, because you want to educate people. If you educate them, that they'll like and trust you. They're more likely to do business with you. Um, Set some goals. I think the, the best goal that you can set is just to be constantly improving. Like if you're gonna be posting a video, try and work out, like is it getting more views in a shorter time frame? It does matter how quick you get your views and getting engagement's really important. Um, so I'm doing a lot of live content at the moment. Um, I like it because it, screen, it can stream to multiple platforms at once. Um, but it's important that I go in afterwards to optimize it with the tags and the keywords because it is a search engine at the end of the day on YouTube. Most important thing, ladies and gentlemen, the Mo is awesome. Thank you, Karen. And Marshall really agrees with me. Marshall, you can't see him, but he's running around like a madman. Anyway, so set your goals. Creating video is a lot of fun, but it's marketing at the end of the day. So it's important to set goals for the videos produced. What do you want to achieve from your video? So if you educate the audience, they're more likely to like you, more likely to trust you, and therefore more likely to do business with you. The other thing to keep in mind is it's an international audience. So that was quite interesting for me. I was thinking to myself last year, why am I getting all these inquiries all of a sudden from Canada, the UK, America? And the answer is it's YouTube. Um, YouTube's biggest audience is, is, is India, followed closely by uh, the US, I believe. Um, and so, you know, Australia, only 25 million people or so here. Um, it's natural that more of the audience is going to come from, from an international. And so you've got to be able to cater for that audience and, and be, be able to facilitate them buying from you. So that means like, you know, having um, calendar booking systems so they can set up times to speak with you. And, and quite often, like I have to, to set aside time in the evening to speak to people in America or Canada, or, for example. Um, and that's all part of it. But they, they actually find that Australia is a lot cheaper than US and Canada. So it's been a, a great uh, market for me. And I definitely do cater. Um, one mistake I must mention to avoid upfront is to try not to be boring because a lot of people when they go into video and they haven't done it before and they're used to doing business in a very proper uh, format they you know very concerned about like politics or like saying the wrong thing or oh, this might upset this you know so you you need to take a little bit of risk with it in order for you to cut through the noise if you look at like some of the successful youtubers they're pretty risky with their content. Um, and you can learn a lot from guys that create content about like gaming or they're like 
um, their morning routine, like the beauty industry is a great one. Um, not necessarily always about business. There's not, there's very few content creators. Well, there's not very few, there's a lot, but um, as a percentage of business people, there's not many nailing it on YouTube. Okay, most people like they may be crushing it on Facebook, or maybe crushing it on Instagram, and then you go to a YouTube channel, they got like three or four subscribers. Um, so you can learn from other industries, apply what they're doing to the business context, and you just cut through a lot of the noise. So know your audience, set your goals, um, make sure you've got the links in the description to go back to your website so that you you know can facilitate calls to action this is where it's great to have a lead magnet something free that people can download to give them additional value it will drive a lot of um, traffic to your website okay um creating a channel uh so my channel is um it's called my name nathaniel bibby it would be a lot easier for me to create a LinkedIn marketing channel. Um, I'm promoting my personal brand for a few reasons, um, as a speaker, um, also to facilitate like pivoting to other social media channels for expert advice. But if I did LinkedIn marketing from an optimization perspective, from knowing what to expect, it would be a lot easier. So give that some thought, give some consideration. What's your niche? If you wanna get fast growth, maybe make it topic specific rather than your company name or your, or your personal name. Um, but obviously if you're growing your personal brand, then you wanna make sure that it's your, your, your name. Um, and Search engine optimization is extremely Im important. Um, there's a few things to consider. Um, your channel authority will be quite important. And this comes down to consistency again. Um, YouTube want to promote channels that are consistently posting content. And so consistency doesn't mean that you have to post every day. It just means that you have to post at regular intervals. So if it's weekly, that's fine as long as you're consistent with it. So think about how often can you commit to posting and then and then commit to it and, and do it. And even if like perfection is a form of procrastination. So I do I do believe in, in dumping content at a consistent interval, even if it's not perfect. Think about what you're already doing um, in your day-to-day -day business life and how you could turn that into YouTube content. So for me, I was speaking from stage a lot. I haven't been doing that that much this year. I'm about to start getting back into it, which I'm so excited about. But you know, on Airtasker, I can hire a videographer for three or four hundred dollars to come. Um, they provide the raw content for me, bit of editing, post that on YouTube, and that's consistent content. Um, doing these lives, obviously. Um, if you haven't got a, if you've got a podcast and you're not doing video, you're missing out on a huge opportunity. There's no reason if you're interviewing people on audio that you shouldn't be doing it on video as well, and then posting it on YouTube. Does not need to be perfect. Authenticity is a, is a great um, attraction because it's just so rare. Like people um, connect with it. Uh, transcription. So not only can YouTube listen to what you're saying in the video, it also reads a transcription. Um, YouTube does have the capability to automatically transcribe your videos, but you may need to go in and edit it. If not, you want to check out rev.com. Rev.com is what I used. Um, I use for some of the most important videos that I have. Certainly the how-to videos. Those are the ones that I actually monetize the most. So. So every now and then, like so between the speaking videos and then I've got these lives, I've got these how-tos. And what I do to create these how-tos is I go to a website called Quora.com. So it's Quora is spelled Q-U-O-A-R-A. Q-U-O-A-R-A, Quora.com. And what Quora is, is just frequently asked questions. So if you type in a keyword, let's say it's LinkedIn, or it could be business coaching, or it could be accounting, what it will tell you is the most popular questions that people are asking about that particular topic. And people can vote questions up and down. So you can see which questions are the most popular. And so you soon work out that some of the questions that are most popular are probably something that you think are really you know, simple questions and easy to answer. But what happens is if you create content around those questions, you'll show up in the search results. So. Let me show you an example to make sure this is as practical as possible. I'm going to share my screen again. Okay. Let's go to Google. Okay. Say you want to download a video from LinkedIn, right? How to 
download a LinkedIn video. So I'll zoom in and then you've got videos showing up here. So So you see my name popping up all here? So this is drives a huge amount of traffic to my channel. Just one question, how to download LinkedIn video. Same thing for how to customize a LinkedIn URL or um, uh, I can't remember some of the other ones like how to optimize your profile, things like that. Um, for how to particularly, uh, you, sorry, Google likes to show uh, videos from YouTube. And so this drives a huge amount of content. It's a huge hack. Like it, it, this brings in so much traffic, and I run, I let YouTube run ads on these particular um, videos, so it brings in a lot of revenue. I get a few hundred dollars a month from just from these videos. Hope you're getting value. Let me know if you're getting value in the comments, guys. I really want to provide value. All right. So moving on. Here we go. All right, let me just bring up my notes here. So we're going to, so we've talked about SEO. Um, engagement's really important. So you've got likes, comments, shares, and embeds. And so think about like, first of all, if you're posting on YouTube, share the content to your Facebook, share it to your LinkedIn. Google can see these links being shared. Those social media sites have the most authority with Google. Uh, because people are using them so much and so many inbound links. I think I've already shared this, but I love this comment, Karen, so I'm sharing it again. <laughs> Capwing is free forever, no watermarks. Yeah, I've used Capwing, very, very good. I endorse Capwing for sure. That's how you, uh, perfect. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome so far. Okay, well, we won't slow down then. Let's keep going. Um, Okay, so if you're asking people to share your video, ask them to like it. Like it really does help if you say like this video. So if you're watching us on YouTube, press like now. Things like that. Press like now. Um, comment, be comment below. Um, it's YouTube's really good, by the way, at figuring out which comments are spam and which ones aren't. So you want to look for like authentic comments. Um, so if you ask people to like, if you have any questions about YouTube marketing that I haven't covered comment below and I'll answer them. You could even drop a comment after you post a video saying, have you got any more questions about YouTube and, and pin that comment to the top so people see it straight away and they go, oh, I've got this burning question that maybe I don't want to watch the whole video to find out or maybe he hasn't answered and so you, they can ask that question but it does help a lot with your SEO that if you're getting some engagement. Um, and if you can create content that people will literally put in their blog and link back to you, that's hugely powerful. So normally to create that kind of value, you need to be doing some research. Um, but sometimes, you know, if you, if, you, if you say, oh, I'm gonna deliver four tips to optimize your LinkedIn profile, and you, you, you deliver on that content, and it's very simple and very easy to follow, um, people will link back to it um, in their blogs. Like if they're, you know, someone's writing a blog about LinkedIn marketing, they, they definitely will embed it in their blog. It will help them and it will help you. Um, making a playlist. Is very powerful as well in the YouTube search results not only will video show up but also playlists so as I've started to create more content around the keyword LinkedIn marketing I also create a playlist around LinkedIn marketing and the cool thing about that is I can add other videos which I found valuable that aren't necessarily mine to the playlist so that YouTube realizes like well this is a really good source of information for LinkedIn marketing so if people are searching for it the playlist will show up but I always make sure my videos are towards the top so people are more likely to watch those first uh, but have the other videos in there as well and therefore there's they're related they're more likely to show up in related related videos playlist is, is a very valuable um, uh, tool your tags and the category that you choose your videos to be in I mean we're getting into semantics now um, so this is details but like tags are really important and the mistake that a lot of people make is they just dump lots of tags in there that they think are popular like you know like um, if you're doing a, a video about LinkedIn marketing for example like some people will like throw in tags like 
I don't know, Gary Vaynerchuk or Grant Cardone or like marketing, like so general, like make it specific so people can find the content when they're looking for it. Therefore, they're more likely to, to watch all of it. Um, on social media, one of the key engagement points is for videos is views. Like how many views do you get? Whereas on YouTube, it's important to remember, it's not how many views you get, it's the watch time. So how long are people watching your videos? So if you post a video that's an hour long, and somebody else posts a video that's five minutes long, you're at an advantage because, I mean, if the content's valuable because the pr people have um, will watch it for longer. Um, so you'll do better. So longer form content does do particularly well on YouTube. That's why I always say to people, if you're creating like an hour's worth of content, you put the long form version on YouTube and you chop it up into shorter versions for LinkedIn and, and Facebook. Great question, Karen. Is uploading natively anything under 10 minutes on LinkedIn still better than dropping a YouTube link? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's no reason why you can't do both, like, like share it on YouTube as well. But if you're posting on LinkedIn, native video will do better. Um, obviously, it needs to be under 10 minutes. So that's why like, I think if you're, if you're creating content longer form, uh, like half an hour, do like the dump that on YouTube, but then even chop it up into like even two, three minute videos. You, you could chop it up that small for LinkedIn posts because then you've got that consistency and you can be posting a lot more. Um, okay, now this is a massive hack for those of you that are still on the call. Um, collaboration. Most of you will know, well not, I, I don't know if most of you know, but a lot of you will know that I've done a lot of interviews and I've done interviews with um, Grant Cardone, Kerwin Ray, Jules Lund, Stephanie Rice, the Olympic swimmer. Guys like this have really grown my audience um, by collaborating with them, providing them value, interviewing them. And a lot of people do it through podcasts and then they skip the video a bit. Um, I think if you're gonna do podcasts, I think everyone should be doing a podcast. I've got, I got a huge amount of audience from um, publishing on Spotify and iTunes. Very easy to do if you go to anchor.fm, use a free platform and it will automatically publish you to all of the podcast channels. Not very, you know, it's very easy to get on iTunes and Spotify, but you know, despite what people might believe. Um, and so then, and then do the video record, do it on Zoom or, or do it live like this. And you can interview people that will grow your audience. But you know, some people go that far and they create a podcast and they, and they get the video and everything. But then when they approach people like, you know, celebrity entrepreneurs or whoever they want to audience, you know, whoever they want, want to interview to add value to their audience, um, they're just like, oh, do you want to be on my podcast? Well, they're going to get loads of those requests. You've got to come with a bit more value. So if you're organized, you've got a one-pager that explains exactly who the audience is, how you're going to publish it, the tools that you're going to give them to share it, um, and some examples of previous episodes. Obviously, you don't have that start, but as soon as you do include that, um, then you can really stand out from the crowd because most people don't bother to, to, to do that stuff. So, you know, when I, when I approach some of these like high profile entrepreneurs, a lot of people ask me, like, how do you get that guy? How do you get that guy? It's like that, like if I can do it, you can do it. You, you start off with, you know, interviewing people that, that are in your network and then you slowly get bigger profile, but you approach them in a very professional format, very organized, very confident, keep your request as short as possible so they can digest the information. A lot of the um, guests that I've had on, I actually use Instagram uh, because I find that um, celebrity entrepreneurs that generally have Instagram in their pocket. The reason being is because Instagram stories so they can produce live content, whereas LinkedIn, they may have delegated to someone in their team. And I would say something like, hey, you know, I've got this web series. This is the size of our audience. They're all entrepreneurs. Um, where can I send more information? So it's a very short text and they'll probably just send back an email address. But in that email, I give a lot of examples, um, links to previous episodes and a one pager attachment, which makes me stand out from the crowd and look professional, look like I know what I'm doing. And you know, five or six questions that I would, will ask them. It's this huge thing. I know, I know I harp on about collaboration a lot, but it's just, it's made a world of difference in, in my business. And I, I, I really hope that it can um, give you some value as well. And as you build your community, I think, um, you know, for a long time, I was only getting 50 to 100 views. 
I think it's important to focus on those people and make sure that you're looking after the people you've got and, and literally go as far as like speaking to them on telephone, getting their feedback. What do you want to see more of? What content did you like? And your audience will naturally grow. A lot of people spend too much time focusing on people that aren't in their audience rather than the people they've already got. Um, I'll never forget, cause two years ago, three years ago, I went on a business trip to Melbourne, which is where I started my business. And I took out for lunch five of my subscribers, my followers on LinkedIn and YouTube that originally followed me. And I took them out for lunch. And what's interesting is a lot of them had dropped off and not, you know, haven't been commenting as much. Um, and they were just thrilled. Like I wanted to, to catch up with them and get their feedback on, you know, the content and like, you know, what, what made you stop commenting so much. And a lot of it's like, out of my control, but it's good, really good to get feedback from them. They're the best people. A lot of people spend too much time in their head or like coming up with ideas on the whiteboard with their team instead of going straight to the source, straight to the audience. And um, thanks for the feedback, guys. I'm glad you're finding this, this valuable. What's, what's this one, Amber? If you have less than 10,000 followers, this is the easy way to get swipe up function for your Instagram stories so you can drive traffic to YouTube. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great, great advice from Amber here. If you have an Instagram, want to grow your YouTube channel, create a two minute preview video and create IG. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you've got the capacity to do this, go for it. But by the way, like if you're not too savvy on video marketing and you don't have the resources to outsource this, don't let it stop you. Start anyway. Because as more you post, the more feedback you'll get and the better that, that um, your content will get. You just, you get better by trial and error. So if you go back and look at some of my old videos, they are absolutely awful. Um, and I hope that they're much better today. And I think that if you're doing, uh, this is what I'll finish off with because we, we are at half an hour mark, but I think this is a big one. If you're doing what everybody else is doing, then you're doing something wrong. It's about being authentic, communicating directly with your audience and adding value. That's all for this Monday night, my friends. Have a great week in business. Let me know what you thought of this episode in the comments and we'll be back next week with a special guest that I've got uh, for you joining from Sydney. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you.